What's poppin' everybody? This is the Cartoon Kid, Ray Rollins. And instead of doing Snoopy in space on Thursdays, we're kicking that shit out of here, man. I, I feel bad, but we're bringing in something newer and better, and that is Infinity Train. And for this episode, we're reviewing Infinity Train Book 2, Episode 2, and it's called The Family Tree Car. Yeah, I know. It's technically supposed to be called Season 2, but it's technically Book 2. That's how they label it. So... Before we get into this episode, man, we're going to have to get that episode breakdown from Mr. Payne. So, Mr. Alex Payne, tell us what happens. Well, this, since this is an ongoing series, this con- this episode continues exactly where the last one stopped, which is when the deer fell down into the hole. So, this, con- this episode continues with um, MT and Jesse going down the tree, which is, turns out to be a family tree that has... Two separate families. McGillicuddy's, I can't for the life of me remember what the other family is. The Tremble, the Trembamble, or whatever. The f- <laughs> so, they're fucking redneck family. I can't remember that. We probably, <laughs> but y'all, y'all know what it is, man. Y'all watch that. They call like Tremble Dwarfs or some, some shit like that. It's something with a T. We just call them the T family. Yeah, the, the T family and the McGillicuddy family. And they're they having a serious feud because at some point someone married somewhere and then they just branched off. So MT and Jesse are going down the tree and they're continuing their bickering from the last episode. So Jesse decides to go off on his own and see if he can maybe sort out this difficulty between these two families. And MT obviously goes to try to find a deer. They eventually meet up again because Jesse failed at getting the family together and they find a deer and that's the episode breakdown. <laughs> Listen, I gotta say, man, I just legit got mad as hell because I couldn't remember the other family's name either. It was like Tremble something. I'm gonna call him. I'm at least gonna call him Tremble. Like, yeah, because I that's, no, that's t- fair enough. I remember that part. No, dude, you don't understand. While I was watching the episode, I was trying my hardest to remember their their name every time they said, it, like trying to click it in my memory so I could say it, but it just wouldn't stick. I got to mention, though, for my first thought of this episode, the sound, the sound quality was on point. I like the little shit. And, and you know, I usually kind of think hmm, you're kind of crazy for mentioning sounds because like that's usually stands out to you more. Mm-hmm. And I know you definitely caught it like when t- Tulips, especially at the end, smacked the shit out of him. <laughs> Hard ass metal. <laughs> like, damn. Yeah, I sound really... like it hurt. I really noticed it too when she when they was jumping on the branches and you could hear the different sound from when um Tulip hit the branch to when um Jesse hit it because like when she hit it you would hear like a a metal thud type of sound yeah because she's, she's metal she's metal yeah bro. that's and, and it, I thought that was pretty dope I I'm not even gonna lie that's pretty damn dope and speaking and of little details little time to do that. Like my first, like my first thought, because like, like you said, little details and they and I love how they do this because they kind of did it in the first season too like where. The number would change, but they would barely acknowledge it. You would just ha- kind of halfway notice it. Like, because while, while he was trying to help out, I guess that you could argue this a moment, but while he was trying to help out the two families and just, like, um, sort the shit out, but he was just being too agreeable and trying to make everyone like him, which I'm assuming is, you know, his journey on the car, trying to be more himself. And right. Shit. But... Like, as he was talking to them, he put his hand out, and you could hear the sound and see the number go up. Right. Because he's just agreeing with everybody. But it's, it's such a small detail that you could so easily miss. So I like that they slipped that in there. Right. And, and, and like, that's just small shit. But that's that's the number one thing that really stood out to me. Like, me personally is the sound, like, the metal sound. Like, oh, my God, they took time to do that. <laughs> And that was pretty damn dope. I'm not even going to lie to you. And there's a couple other times where she, like, I think she hit she hit him one other time, and you just hear the metal, and it's like, oh, cool. Yeah, I think at the beginning. And I think another cool thing is that they somewhat announced that since she's metal, she can't feel pain or anything like a normal human can. So, which is dope. Like, I, I, that's, like, cool. Um, it, it lets you get a sense of feel as you're watching the show, if that makes any type of sense. Yeah, and yeah, I like right. when they point little shit like uh, shit when they point little stuff out like that. So, um, let's get into moments. What are some of your standout moments in this episode? Well, like I mentioned, the the whole argument when um they was having the friggin' when 
Jesse was trying. I just love how they keep cutting off him his song. Yeah, it's like, I, I didn't. I, I kind of didn't want to hear it either. I didn't want to <laughs> no. hear it either. And it's so funny because he got he he sure found a way to slip it in there too when they was trying to be nice to each other and shit too. I gotta I gotta mention too since we're talking like we're talking about sound a little bit earlier like mm-hmm. Tulip is I she's very she's much meaner than her counterpart. I I mean I don't know if that's because I watched the whole season a couple days ago. Um, actually technically it would be a week from <laughs> it'll be a, a week since this was posted, but um. Like she's this metal tulip is very mean compared to her counterpart. Like she does not give a fuck about nobody. Okay. Like all her realistic emotions just went with her like realistic body. So mm-hmm. it's just she she treats that dude like shit. She really I does. Think, and I think and it's I, fa- I think it's fair though because you could tell she just wants to be on her own and stay. So even at the end when they're like going back up the tree, like she basically even has to force herself and try bring up all these like. Trying to do that Finley veil. Well, you see, me and the me and the dare are friends. Yeah. So I'll be around with you, but not me and you. We're not friends. And I guess I'll stick around with you just to get you away from the dare and get your number down. Right. And and, and then I want to mention too, like the voice acting, especially for Tulip, was on fucking point. That's I got to mention that. I and that's that's why I brought this up. It's just like man. It, in a sense, you could tell it's forced, but it was meant to be forced. Like, yeah, she don't give a fuck about this dude, and it's <laughs> showing in that voice acting too. And, and I just like how you can hear that shit. She she said, what did she say? She was like, um, she said something along the lines of, uh, oh, let's I'm gonna use a song for example. She's like, you want to hear my song? And then you know, obviously they're trying to get along with each other because they, you know, it's making the tree decrease. She's like. Yeah, sure. I love to hear your song. I love to hear it. Like she, she's yeah, got that you, grit in her voice. It's like, ah. yeah. It's like, man, no, fuck. I don't want to hear your motherfucking song. But shit, if I have to, I got to. I suppose. So. I think I think Jesse's voice acting is pretty good too, because you could like get that, because like you could get that goofy feel. And and honestly, that's what I love about this episode, which I kind of was afraid of in the first one. Because, like, Jesse seemed like a dumbass and was just going to yeah. be goofy and stupid. But, like, I love how they, like, shifted the you know what? of his personality Yo, in this you know, episode. You know who the he reminds me of? And maybe I'm going a little off the mark here and you won't know who I'm talking about. Maybe you will. I don't think you will, though. But he reminds me of Sokka from Avatar The Last Airbender. He's got that goofy personality that, yeah, everyone will love. Everybody loves. But he just wants to, you know, make everybody get along. And he's kind of smart, too. And Jesse's not a dumbass. At least I don't think. I mean, well, I just came off that way a little word. bit. We I haven't, we haven't, we haven't seen enough of him to really tell yet. We haven't. I, that's, that's I think the, the better word would be just like um, overly cheery. Like, you know how you'll see those like blissfully overly cheery. Everything is ha ha, giggity giggity type of way. And, and Sokka was kind of the same way, but there was moments where he's like, okay, it's time to be serious, it's time to be realistic. So, but, and, and but like I, I said, to, we haven't. We go ahead. What I was getting to with the voice acting though on that end, because like you know he had that whatever, and and he sounds so cheery, but then like you could hear the genuine panic in his voice when he was trying to help the people towards the end. I yeah. you could hear like the sadness when um, Tulip was basically rejecting him. I guess. Yeah. For lack of a better term. Yo, that's gonna be Tulip's love interest, yo. I swear to God. <laughs> Near the, like, I don't know how they're gonna do this show or continue to do it, but that's gonna be her love interest. I swear to God. Yo, that might be in the real world too. Honestly, she might he might fall in love with the real Tulip, not the metal Tulip. I don't know. It's just something that just crossed my mind. Like I mean, that usually happens in each and every show, practically. I mean, listen, the way the friggin' the way the first um season went i can't say it's out of the realm of possibility yo it, you know what it's like, kind of like it's kind of like fry and leela from future it's kind of like fry and leela from futurama like they didn't like each other in the first episode and you know they kind of grow to get along with each other actually you know what that happens way quicker than you know i'm trying to like portray here but you know you see where i'm coming from you know what i'm yeah talking. but um let's get back to moments though what are some uh, so what are some more of your standout moments um, the moment when the friggin' two, I'm assuming they was an old couple, they never specified who they were to each other, but the ones who was friggin' arguing about how each, each other die. My uh-huh. question is, how do you die from sitting on a toilet too hard? 
<laughs> That's my question. Like, how the hell do you die from sitting on a toilet? You know, you know what? I kind of mentioned this because I saw what, and I know I'm slipping away from moments again. But, yo, all the, these families are redneck families, all right? They're motherfucking hillbilly sounding ass rednecks. And <laughs> if there's any rednecks watching this, I do apologize. I, I really do. I don't, I mean, no offense. But the only reason I said that was to say this. Is it bad that my first immediate thought is, yo, they fucking hunted and ate the deer, yo. One of the families <laughs> hunted and ate that motherfucking deer. <laughs> that was my first immediate thought. Because, I mean, it, it's not it's not a knock on them because those people hunt, man. Those people really do hunt. Like, they be out in the woods and shit hunt. So, <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> the funny thing is, though, yeah, to go back to the voice acting, the voice acting for the tree people was pretty great, too. Yeah, no, it, it was. It, it was. It really was. Um, the only, the main moment, like I said, the main moments for me, personally, that really stand out is the moments, like, where Tula is really showing her fucking ass. Figuratively, obviously. <laughs> and it's just like, she is a fucking bitch. <laughs> she really is. <laughs> she's not fucking with nobody. And then she's like, I'm gonna find them on my own. I don't need your help. Um, and then, obviously, the, at the end, she's like, your number went up. Boom! Just freaking <laughs> popped his ass. She's like, damn, that shit sounded like that hurt. Yo. Listen, I had to Listen. rewind on that point. I had to. Listen, I'm soft and squishy. You're hard and mean. I guess. <laughs> and I, I hope you're not talking about my dick. But no, like, and she, doesn't, like she, doesn't, she doesn't have a number, right? No. no, she doesn't. No, because I was looking at her hand. I'm like, yo, she doesn't have that green glowy thing like uh, Jesse and regular tulip had. So, no, so she's, is she... a, she's a creation of the um, train. So. so she can't go nowhere. She can't get off. None of that shit. I don't know. Maybe that maybe that's what we'll find out eventually. But I don't I don't know. I don't I would I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so either. Hmm. Damn. I mean, she trapped on that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but. Let's get a positive and a negative from you. Okay, my positive is the the way they dealt with, because you know in a lot of stories they want they 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 just love to just jam in what you're supposed to think about certain things. Yeah. Now, granted, maybe you could argue that because it's an ongoing story, that's why they didn't do it, and that's how they make it take their time. But I just love how they very, very, very subtly in a way that you wouldn't even notice, hint at what Jesse's issue is, and mm-hmm. even barely pit, like put attention to his number t- changing when it happened, uh-huh. I mean. Right. So I like that they're like slowly building the characters up and the emotions up in a way in this episode. Like, instead of just saying, oh, maybe I'm here because I make people, I want to try um, be nice with everyone and I gotta agree with that what everyone says. Right. It was just something subtle. So no, you're right. You're right. So that's my positive for the episode. Like the character and, and they somewhat and was on they, point. they somewhat did that with Tulip in season one. Like they slowly built up to that. So obviously we're gonna really find out and get like clarification probably somewhere like mid season and whatnot. So obviously as the time we post this there's multiple episodes that are gonna be out. But you know we haven't seen them yet, so but we will be reviewing them. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, but yeah, and a negative. Um, if I had to say one, I would say maybe, I would say maybe a little bit more could have happened in the episode, or maybe it could have had a better resolution. Well, I guess it had a pretty decent resolution because, um, it isn't really about super complex resolution sometimes even though it is out of time but um you know what now that i think about it and and call me crazy but this slipped my mind did there was no resolution between the two families right no that's what i thought okay yeah and that's the that's (laughs) that's fucked up (laughs) okay and that's a definitely a negative on both of our parts like because i i'll definitely say yo um Okay, we see a little resolution between Jesse and Tulip, how they get down the tree and they find Alan Dracula. That's all fine and good. 
But what's going on between these two families? Like, what what's going to happen with them? There's, you mean they're still going to be arguing and fighting? Like, but I don't think they're supposed to have a resolution, though. Because even that's how the tree works. You know, when you argue, you friggin' get... Okay. You, you know, the tree grows and, you know... It if, if there was no me. argument, there was no arguments, there wouldn't be any family tree car. Yeah. So, I think that... I don't think they're supposed to um, resolve the issues. Okay. Okay. Valid point. Valid point. Um, I would say that's a very creative thing, though. When you really think about that concept and idea, it's a family mm-hmm. tree where they have two split members of the of the family where the tree branched off somewhere, and these people are continuously arguing, and the more they argue, the more the tree grows. Right. No, like that concept. That, that's a really great. That's a really interesting it idea. Is. It it absolutely is, and like you said, there's no technically no need for a resolution between them here so which i mean call me crazy that's something i want to see you just feel the episode i guess you would say feels incomplete without it but i mean that's the point it's, it's not supposed to be resolved yeah. but anyway. I, I guess you can even argue that 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 kind of show like that sits there as like a metaphor to say you know listen jesse can't fix shit if he can, uh, can't always fix the arguments between people and shit right uh my positive my main positive, like I said, and I said it earlier, I'm going to say it one more time, sound was on point, okay? Like, just the little things that really stood out to me was, like, Tool and whatnot, how she's metal and her interactions with the environment. You hear little metal sound effects. The fact that they took time and put that in there is pretty damn dope because they didn't have to do that. They didn't have to do that. Only, it, like, the thing they really had to do um, – was put that metal smack when to pop <laughs> Jesse's ass. <laughs> and that's it. That's all they had to do. Um, there was one sound like near in the end when the when they were going down the tree. It sounded like freaking suction cups. I was like, oh my God. What the fuck is that? You you know what I'm talking about? You mean when they was going up the tree again at the end? Yeah, it freaking sound like suction cups. <laughs> I can't even I can't even try to mimic that shit. No, that's because that that because that's what like Adam Dracula had the suction cup feet walking up the tree. I don't know. Listen, oh. that deer, something wrong with that deer. We're not wrong with him, but like that's that's what I was saying. Like, is this deer what, like Squidward or something? Is he like merged with Squidward? He's got the tentacles and he's doing the suction. Cu- like that that's not even sense. what I mean. That, that's not even what I mean. like this deer just seems to be able to do whatever the hell he feels like. <laughs> he could change colors. He could grow. He could shrink. He could friggin'. Yo, that dude's he's gonna be the new Atticus. Cup feet. He's, he's gonna be the Atticus of this season. Um, let's get on to the review. I gotta say, I'm gonna go first. This episode, for being what it was, I like for one that this story is a continuous story. I love that fact. And I remember right at the end of uh, season two, episode one, I was like, oh man, what's gonna happen with the deer? Like. You know, and it just continued on from that part. And, you know, you get to get, see more of Jesse's characterization. I really like the fact, like, he's kind of like Sokka in a sense. You can get that comedy aspect, too, along with, you know, I wouldn't say this show is necessarily serious, like like Avatar The Last Airbender, where Sokka's personality was really needed. But I will say this show does have a, a nice adventurous undertone. So... I will say, like, Jesse's personality will add a big improvement to the show. And you got Tulip's mean ass, where you see her personality come out, like, <laughs> full force in this episode. Like, this episode has great on-point characterization, for sure. Story-wise, obviously, it's focused around them finding Alan Dracula, which they obviously do. And it, they somewhat, I guess you could say, bond? I wouldn't. I guess that wouldn't be the appropriate term, <laughs> because... I wouldn't say they're, like, closer to each other, but they do come to a mutual understanding in the end, which is the resolution of the episode. Like, hey, I'm going to help you get your ass off here so I can keep this deer. So I will say that's definitely the big bonus out of this episode, and that was a big payoff. Overall, like, the main thing i got to say, this was very enjoyable. Comedy, it was very comedy-centered, obviously with Tula beating the shit out of my fucking Jesse at the end. And then it's just like, like I said, I enjoyed seeing these two characters. Tula comes out full force. Jesse definitely come out full force trying to deal with the families. So they're on point. So my overall rating is 7.5 out of 10. What about yours? Um, I thought the episode was, like you said, it was really enjoyable. The comedy was on point. I feel like maybe in certain spots it could have had a little bit more. But at the same time, I don't think so. I think it did everything it needed to. Um. 
I feel like it did more in terms of character in this one episode than most shows do in 30 minutes, but, you know. Um, but I like you, like like you said, very enjoyable episode. Characterization on point, comedy on point. They didn't they didn't show any of the any of the flex in this episode, so I I wonder when when that's going to start to come into play again when they're going to be going after Tulip. Um, right? Yeah, you think they would? You think they would? But they got to have that you know those spots in between to build Jesse's character as well. But right. Um, but yeah, I, I I agree. I think I'm gonna give this episode a um a seven point five, just like you. Well, there y'all have it, man. I'm the cartoon kid, Ray Rollins, and he's Alex Payne, and we both give Infinity Train season two, episode two, the Family Tree Car, a seven point five out of ten. Very good episode, if I do say so myself. But y'all know what it is, man. This is the Cartoon Kid channel where we talk cartoons and we do it daily, baby. And if you guys have anything specific to say on this episode, want to share your opinions, man, toss them down in the comments box below, man. Tell me what you think about this episode. Tell me if you like it. Tell me if you hate it. And if you have any other episodes that you want us to review from season one specifically or any shows in general, man, toss them down in the comments box below. I'm always looking at the motherfuckers. But until then, we will see you when we see you. Peace out, everybody.